Thanks for watching. I'm Margot Kinberg, and this is In the Spotlight, a closer look at a crime novel. When a lot of people think about Norwegian crime fiction, the first name that may come to their minds is Jonas Bunes Harry Hood books. The fact is, there's a lot of other Norwegian crime fiction out there. Let's take a look at one example today and turn the spotlight on Gunnar Stolzen's We Shall Inherit the Wind. Fark Vilm is a private investigator who lives and works in Bergen. One day, his partner Karen introduces him to her friend Randvig. It seems that Randvig's husband Mons has gone missing. She hasn't contacted the police officially because she and Mons had had an argument just before he disappeared. So it's quite possible he left of his own accord or that the police will suspect her of murder. She asks Vilm to see if he can locate Mons and he agrees. The first step, of course, is to find out about Mon's background, and Vilm starts to get some information. Then, tragically, Mons is found murdered. Now the case turns from a missing person's case to a case of somebody killing someone else. So Vilm starts to look for people who might have had a motive. He soon learns that Mons had been drawn into a major controversy about wind power in the area. Some people want to use wind power to decrease dependence on fossil fuels and turn to more sustainable power. However, the wind turbines will impact the wildlife and other ecosystems, and there are those who fight against them for just that reason. There are strong feelings on both sides, and it comes out that Mons had recently changed his own position on the issue, and that adds a complication. There's also Mons' personal life. His adult children could have had motives for murder, Certainly, they resent the presence of their stepmother, and they are bitter about the circumstances of that marriage. And there are other things from the past that come up. Mons has been in the area for a long time, and some people have long memories. As the investigation goes on, Vilm learns that some people involved are not what they seem to be, and that whoever killed Mons is willing to do anything, including killing again, in order to keep the truth about the murder from coming out. So what holds this story together? What are the elements that we see in the story? Well, let's start with the protagonist. The novel is told from Vilm's perspective, first person, past tense, so we get to know him. He's in his 60s and in a stable relationship with Karin. Readers who dislike dysfunctional slews who can't interact will be pleased to know that that's not the case here. He makes mistakes and admits it too. He's no superhero, but he's not a demon-haunted detective either. Readers who dislike romance and novels will also be pleased to know that although Karen and, and Vilm are a loving couple, their relationship doesn't overtake the plot. The setting on the west coast of Norway is also an important element in the novel. Stulfsson places the reader there both physically and in terms of local culture. The very real political, economic, and ecological issues around the use of wind power also make for an important debate in that part of Norway, and that's woven into the story too. The story isn't completely bleak, but it's not exactly a happy story with an everything going to be all right sort of ending. It isn't graphically violent, but it's got some real sadness in it, and we see the impact that loss, death, and regret can have on people. It's not uplifting, but I can say without spoiling the story that readers do get the answers to the puzzle. We Shall Inherit the Wind is the story of the way lives in Western Norway are woven together and what that means when someone is killed. It brings up debates about sustainability and the divisions that that issue can cause and features a private investigator who slowly puts the pieces of the puzzle together. This has been In the Spotlight. I'm Margot Kinberg. Thanks for watching.